So in this question, we want to look at the use of a measuring cylinder to determine volume of an irregular solid as well as its density. This is the most common use of the measuring cylinder in physics. It can be used for other functions, but usually when you see questions involving the measuring cylinder, expect to determine volume of an irregular solid and then if the mass of the regular solid is given you they will consequently ask you to determine the density so let's read the question together and see what we have we are told that um, figure one shows a measuring cylinder which contains water initially at level a this level here a solid of mass 11 grams is immersed in the water the level rises to be this is what you would expect when we use the measuring cylinder to determine the volume of an irregular solid we first of all fill the measuring cylinder up to a certain level with water and then we determine the volume of the water in the measuring cylinder by reading the scale so i'm going to come to the scale in a moment and then we get the solid, we tie it with a piece of thread and then immerse it gently in the measuring cylinder. The water level, of course, is going to rise. The reason it rises is this. Water is incompressible. So if a solid comes into the liquid, the water must give space whose volume is equal to the space occupied by the solid. That is why we say that the volume of the water displaced, because when the water level moves up, we say the term we use here is that the water has been displaced. And we can tell how much volume it has been displaced. So the volume of the water displaced is exactly equal to the volume of the solid. This is the concept that you must understand. The volume of the water displaced is equal to the volume of the irregular solid which is inside there. So we are going to determine the volume of this water which is displaced. How do we do that? We need to know the volume represented by one small division on that scale. And that is where we are going to start from. So over here, this is 2 centimeters cubed and this is 3 centimeters cubed. So the difference between them is one centimeters cubed. This one centimeters cubed is divided into five divisions. One, two, three, four, five. So we divide that one centimeters cubed by five divisions in order to get the volume represented by one division on that scale. So if I divide 1 by 5, we are going to get 0 0.2 centimeters cubed. So this is the volume represented by one division on the scale. So the second concept is this. When you're given an analog scale, like the one found on the sides of the measuring cylinder, you must determine the value represented by one division on that scale and this is how we always do it you will look for the for two adjacent numbers you will look for two adjacent ad, adjacent numbers like for example between two and three you i could have used a three and four once you get the difference between the two adjacent numbers you get the difference between the two adjacent numbers. 3 minus 2 gives 1 centimeter cubed. Or 5 minus 4, it gives me 1 centimeter cubed. Once you get that difference between two adjacent numbers, divide that number by the number of divisions that we have in that space. In this case, it is 5. In other cases, it may be 4, it may be 2, it may be 10, it may be any number. You can be able to count the spaces there. So divide that difference between the two numbers by the number of divisions. 
and you will always get the value represented by one division. Now we want to read the volume because for me to be able to determine the volume of this solid I need to read the initial volume which is this one here that one there corresponding to this mark because that is where the lowest point of the meniscus is. This is the next point. When you are reading the volume on a measuring cylinder, you'll find that the liquid forms a meniscus which curves like that. You look at the lowest point of that meniscus. This is the third concept. So, the lowest point of that meniscus because it, it bends like that is this one here and it corresponds to this division here. So I need to know this volume which I'm calling the initial volume of the water in the measuring cylinder is how much. I look at the, the whole number below that and it appears to be 4. 4. This 4 I'm going to add how many divisions? 1, 2, 3. I'm going to add 3 divisions. And each division is 0 0.2. And this one will give me 4 plus 0 0.6, which will give me 4.6 centimeters cubed. I'm moving step by step here because I want you to get first time how we do it. Another student may have wanted to, to count this mentally because if I move from 2, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, 3.0, 3.2, 3.4, you can see each and every time I'm adding mentally, I'm adding 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. The mistake students make here is to assume that every count is 0 0.1. Don't make that mistake. I've shown you how you determine the value represented by one division. Always count in steps of that value, in step of that value. So this other student just adds these numbers mentally, 4.2, 4.4, 4.6 and you get 4.6 there. You can use the same method to get this, this volume here represented by this value here. Since this is 7, this is 7, then you've got 7.2, 7.4. So you're going to say V2 is 7.4 centimeters cubed. So you can use any method that you want. And in order to get the volume of the water displaced, which is also equal to the volume of the object, you simply need to get V2 minus V1. You get the bigger volume minus the smaller volume. And when you look at that, this is 7.4. You subtract 4.6 and you're going to get 2.8 centimeters cubed. So that is the volume of the water displaced. It is also equal to the volume of the solid which has been immersed. Let me show you the third method of determining that volume. What you'll do, you'll come to this mark here and this mark here and count how many smaller divisions we have. Because you know the value represented by one division, you will start from here and you'll start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you find that they are 14 divisions. 14 divisions, you multiply by 0 0.2, you're certainly going to get 2.8 centimeters cubed and it is so easy to get that so you can use any one of those methods and remember I'm going step by step in this question 
because many questions in our syllabus will involve that skill. So I want you to get that skill quite clearly. Now the question I'm being asked here is to determine the density of this solid, the density of the solid. So I will recall this density is equal to mass over volume. The mass of the solid is 11 grams as given and its volume we have just seen that it is 2.8 centimeters cubed and this is going to give me 3.9 to two decimal places it will give me about 3.93 but to two decimal uh, places or to one decimal point then it is 3.9 now the units how do i get the units i can see we've got grams divided by centimeters cubed so grams divided by centimeters cubed and we read these as grams per centimeters cubed and that is how you get the final answer let's see how the examiner is going to award the marks the examiner will certainly award a mark here for showing the method that you are using one of the ways in which method marks are awarded in physics is when you write down a formula or an equation. So for this question, we are going to add word that one mark here. And then when you substitute correctly into that equation, the next mark is awarded. And finally, the last mark is awarded here when you quote this number and the unit. When we calculate physical quantities in physics, it is not complete until you have quoted a number and a unit. Very important. Now, if you don't remember the unit of the physical quantity you have calculated, I've just shown you how you do it. You trace back the units that you have used in the substitution. For example, when I divide 11 by 2.8, to give me 3.9 the units for the density can also be derived by dividing grams by centimeters cubed they don't need to be SI units because the question does not require us to use SI units and that is how you tackle a question like this so remember the concepts we have learned here the use of the measuring cylinder to determine First of all, volume of liquids, which can further be used to determine volume of irregularly shaped solids by the process of displacement. And the concept is that the volume of the solid is equal to the volume of the water displaced because the solid goes and occupies a space which is equal to its own volume. So the water being incompressible must allow must move out in order for the solid to find a space so the volume which is which moves out or the volume which moves up we say it has been displaced we say the water has been displaced so that volume is exactly equal to the volume of the solid and then i took you through the process of reading analog scales that scale is going to be very important when you're looking at other scale. For example, the meter rule scale, the vernier calipers scale, the, the micrometers crew gauge scale. When you're reading analog meters such as voltmeters and ammeters, that scale is going to be very important. Any analog scale, it has got a point which is moving you can use that skill of determining the smallest, the value represented by the smallest division on the scale to determine the value of one small division on that scale. And then now, once you have done that, you are on the right path of reading the correct value on that particular scale. Those concepts are very important. So replay this video once again see how i've done the various parts and try to replicate that in any other question that involves the measuring cylinder